right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our panel, Calming Your Mental Mischief with Smart Bear. My name is Crystal Farley, and I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we are going to be uh, discussing mental health openly, freely, with all of its beauty, all of its glory. Um, it's become apparent that during this life disruption that we are all in need of community connection and as many resources as we can possibly get. Um, so this, this is why us at Smart Bear have brought together this fine group of individuals to address how to understand, identify, and most importantly, work to alleviate stress, anxiety, and worry. So in addition, we hope to discuss other concerns and I'm sure other resources will, um, will come up that will help you that, uh, to understand that you're not alone. Um, we're in this together. So join me in welcoming our panelists. First, we have Brett Cotter, founder of stressisgone.org. If you want to wave, I mean, I'm sure they know who Brett is, but um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sammy Courtray, co-founder of FitSpot. Dr. Ernestine Jennings, professor in the Department of Psychiatry at Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University. That's a mouthful. Um, we have Allison Sproul, manager of People at Connect RN, and Heather Sweeney, registered nurse, thank you very much, and wellness coach. So as you can see from this lineup, there will be something for everybody watching. So thank you guys for joining us today to speak on the panel. We very much appreciate it. Um, so, but before we get started, right, I feel like we need to get in the mood to have this conversation, right? I mean, it's a pretty open, vulnerable place. And um, Brett, I, I hear that you have this really awesome mindfulness moment. Would you mind helping us with that? And we encourage our viewers to, to do the same, right? Yeah, I would love to. And um, I encourage everyone together that's watching this to do it all together. We'll do it as one unit. So. Let's start off by closing our eyes, placing one hand on your chest and the other hand on your stomach, and focusing your mind on the airflow, just breathing deep and slow, bringing your attention to your next breath in, right where the airflow touches the tip of your nose. Following the flow a little deeper. Allowing the air to move through and open your sinuses. Each breath making it easier and easier to breathe. Following the airflow a little deeper, unlocking and releasing all the tension from behind your eyes. Feeling your next breath going even deeper, unwinding tension from the back of your mind. Following your next breath down your throat, filling up your chest with life force. Breathing deep and slow, softly letting go, allowing the air to flow directly to the center of your heart. Unlocking and releasing tension from every single part. Completely free. 
of any anxiety. Breathing deep and slow, always remembering the way I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And just focus your mind on your next breath. Move your fingers and your toes, your ankles and your wrists, your knees and your elbows, shoulders and your neck. And open up your eyes when you're ready. Well, my next question was going to be, how are you? But <laughs> I feel like that was like I need to go to sleep now. You guys can go home. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, that's what did. That was I did a lot of people this morning in my meditation classes. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love it. It's so refreshing. What I always find interesting about breathing like that, Brett, is how hard it is for me to breathe deeply because... I think most of the time due to like multitasking, we're just shallow breathing, right? And so to breathe really deep and focus on it like that is just a magical experience when we take the time to do it. So thank you so much for sharing that. Whew. Awesome. I'm glad you did. Oh, thank you. Well, I don't think anyone is stressed in this moment right no. here. Right now, right? <laughs> but, but, but maybe Dr. Jennings, I mean, just to sort of kick off the conversation now that we're sort of like, in the moment we're present, how would we be able to perhaps identify when things aren't going well? When would it be a good time to maybe take a minute to breathe? Absolutely. So one of the things, I'm so glad we started out with the breathing exercise because that's one of the things I try to keep people into is when you notice your breathing pattern changing, one of the first things that happens when we feel stressed or threatened is we clench up mm -hmm. and our Breathing starts to get that staccato, and you can you can hear it in people. Their voice, um, their their language becomes that staccato, and um, they start to have shorter sentences and not really kind of express everything. Your t your shoulders are up to here, so when you said release your shoulders, I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> and so you know you start to just tense up. So if you start to feel that, some and, and it's not for everybody, but when I do breathing exercises with people, I'll ask where they feel the tension. Sometimes it's in the lower back. So I see people in a primary care practice who often come in with um, you know, pain and they'll say, oh, it's my lower back. Well, that's usually a lot from stress or like here in the neck and the shoulders where we tense up. So just that kind of tightness that we get when we're you know, feeling a threat and it's time to run and we got to do something. So that's kind of the physiological response I try to keep people into. So that's why the breathing is perfect. Um, because when you stop to breathe, you can go, oh, I do feel that in my neck or I feel it in my knee, you know, wherever it is, and then kind of release it. So that's kind of the in the moment feeling of stress um, and anxiety. And then the long term and the even long term, I'm saying like throughout the day and even throughout you know, your interactions with people, I talk with people a lot about their it infecting your sleep. If you're noticing that you're not sleeping, um, if you're noticing that you're more irritable with people um, that you like, people you don't like, eh. but um, <laughs> people that, that you actually want to be around, you find yourself like short with, um, that can be a sign that you're just getting maybe too much that's going on. It doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong, but it's like your body and brain are, are, are recognizing a mismatch. So, um, but I often talk about, ask people, one of my first questions is first the breathing, and then I ask, how's your sleep? Because if people aren't getting the sleep on time, if people find themselves, you know, eyes wide awake in the middle of the night, can see if there's things that are going on that they're really worried about, or just they're so tense that they can't come down during the night. So those are the basics. And then isolation, and people start pulling away from things, again, that they like, um, that, you know, it's a sign that maybe maybe something else is going on there and you can notice that you, someone else, you know, and you may even your friends and family may say, you, you know, we notice that you're pulling away, you're not as involved as usual. Those can be just kind of basic signs that I will ask people about and get their comments on how other people perceive it as well. That's great. I think um, oftentimes we live, you know, we live with these 
these things that we don't, these nuances that we don't notice. Okay. And then so to like actually sit there and think about, oh, wow, I am stepping away from something I really enjoy. Or even though I am self-isolating, I'm isolating myself even more. I'm even more. not connecting with people. I think that's a really great point to like evaluate what we're doing. We get so stuck in routines sometimes, right? That we forget to see outside the blinders. Um, thank you, Dr. Jennings. And so obviously, I mean, there's like a lot to be stressed about in life, right? Like, so like life was hard before mm -hmm. like this worldwide pandemic that we're sort of like dealing with now. Um, so I guess, you know, we have obviously had significant disruption, right? When we think about um, pivoting to work from home, uh, isolation, job loss, essential job needs, right, nurses. So obviously we have a wide variety of folks here on the panel. So maybe we we can start with Allison. Like, what are you hearing from like what has, you know, caused stress in your environment or for your people? Yeah, so uh, I get the unique opportunity to support a uh, corporate staff as well as a clinical staff that goes across a variety of facilities in the long-term care market, which is obviously one of the hardest hit in the pandemic. So naturally there's, there's been a, an onslaught of a lot of depressing news, quite frankly, of patients in our partner facilities passing away due to COVID-19. And so that can be a lot for anyone to handle mm -hmm. on top of their own personal stress, is whether it be, you know, something that might be menial to someone, you know, transitioning from going to the office to working remotely or being a parent as well as a teacher, as well as an employee all at the same time. And so a lot of the questions that I've gotten, at least from our corporate team, has been surrounding like, I don't feel like I'm able to give 100% right now. And a lot of my response to both them and also reinforcing with the managers is, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and making it be a perfectly acceptable reality for, you know, what's going on right now. No one has a global pandemic playbook rolling around the, the people ops HR space, right? So I think it's important to have that conversation, make sure that people know that essentially they might not be operating at full capacity, feeling guilty perhaps about taking time off if they have that opportunity is totally normal, but you should still take that mental space or feeling lonely because maybe your only social interaction was going to the office. Also totally normal. Or maybe thriving in this environment of working remotely and not seeing other people could also be totally normal. And so talking to whether it's our clinical staff members or our corporate team members, I think there's been a wide variety of emotional responses that I've seen across the deck. And I think the cornerstone is just letting them all know it's totally normal to feel this way and you're not alone in this feeling. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I always say that um, stress is subjective. And so something is, could be super stressful to you, Allison, and not to me, right. And vice versa. So I think it's really great that you're um, having that dialogue with, with the folks that you work with. Now, Sammy, you get to offer a little bit of a different perspective, right? So would you mind sharing a bit about what you're seeing? Absolutely. So for some context, uh, FitSpot, the company that I co-founded, we are a workforce engagement platform that connects employees through these virtual experiences. So a huge trend that we're seeing in these virtual experiences and services is mindfulness and resilience training is topics like combating burnout or even you know the art of slowing down we can see that employees are requesting these types of services and it's also interesting that they're doing it on our platform which infers that they're doing it with their other colleagues which brings a sense of community together so the fact that they're actively participating in these services you know digitally virtually and with their colleagues is that they are seeking this sense of community that perhaps was lost when you stepped out of the physical workplace 
We're also seeing trends in like skills or personal development, such as language classes um, or even guitar classes. So it's nice to see that people are taking the time or this opportunity to maybe hone in on specific skills that they want to build um, and learn on. And, and naturally, um, I'll wrap up with this, that physical fitness classes are, are very engaged at this time. As you can imagine, people are dealing with chaotic lifestyles at the moment with kids being at home, um, with partners being at home, animals being at home, and just that moment to escape, maybe get your heart rate up or take your mind off of something else besides work. We've seen a, a large uptick in those services as well. That's awesome. And I mean, you're talking about really like overall wellness, right? Mm -hmm. Like from head to toe, mind, body, soul. That's, that's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So um, I know at Smart Bear, we've done some pretty, some grassroots efforts. So like we have mindfulness sessions and we offer, um, we just have some pretty candid conversations with different teams. So uh, it's really great to hear that a lot of employers are looking at things like that to, to build that community and connection. I love that. Yeah. Um, so you know, thinking about like overall wellness, I mean, Heather, would you, would you mind sharing? I, I know that you, there's a lot of different stressors that, you know, that, yeah, that you're dealing with on the daily basis and you sort of uh, focus on wellness for individuals being a first responder yourself. So would you mind sharing a bit about your thoughts? Yeah, of course. Um, everything everybody's saying is I keep shaking my head because it's resonating with me on so many different levels from my, you know, various perspectives that I have. Um, I guess I'll start, you know, as a registered nurse and being in that space, while I'm not bedside right now, I am well connected in that community. And just hearing from fellow nurses and doctors and physical therapists and everybody who's out there working with these patients, um, I'm hearing a lot about burnout and actually as a result, um, thinking about leaving the space of nursing. And so I've had a lot of conversations with fellow nurses who are in that bedside space or in maybe a much more stressful space than I am um, to remind them this is, you know, we are in the moment, we are in the heat of this right now and giving them some tips to, you know, again, be mindful. Remember there is that sense of support and community, not just from your fellow healthcare workers, but outside of that family friends. Um, and that they aren't alone. You know, we are in this together. And I guess on the positive note in that space, there is a very tight knit community of support. So that has been wonderful. Um, as a wellness coach, I've had a lot of folks asking me, you know, hey, my family dynamic has been turned on its head. My husband who traveled every other week for a week is home. 24-7, 365 right now. <laughs> so, you know, the family dynamic, that's, that just being one example, certainly um, is playing a role in triggering stress for folks. Um, and to Allison's point, for some, it's made a situation where they're thriving and they never expected that it would be that way. Um, so again, just a reminder, you know, we're in the moment and, and trying to sort of step out when we can and be really present, acknowledge how we're feeling and breathe through it, work through it, talk to a friend. Um, I guess just, my last- Can I chime in for one second? Because you both have sort of said it now. And I, um, I can respect people that are thriving in this sort of environment right now. Like if you're taking the right steps to make it a situation that's positive, like that's a great thing. But do you think that some people might feel guilty feeling good about this? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I actually wrote about this recently because- <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's this, it's a quote I think of often, which is comparison is the thief of joy. And when you start to look at other folks' situations, whether they be better or worse than where you are, and of course that's your own viewpoint, right? I think there is guilt associated uh, specifically with feeling like, hey, I'm doing great. And then you're talking to all your friends and they're like, I am really like, I'm dying over here. This is miserable. And you don't want to say how you're really feeling because you're, you're feeling bad that they're not feeling that way. But what I was writing about was really owning how you feel and that it is okay if you are thriving in this example. And that doesn't take away from somebody else who is having a really hard time or maybe feeling even better than you are. Um, that's just where you are. So that's, that's my take on it. Yeah, that's fair. That's completely fair. Um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Brett, 
Dr. Jennings, do you have anything else you want to add with regards to what you're seeing um, for stress out there that could be uh, popping up because of changes? Jump in. Um, as far as the landscape out there, it's totally diverse, which all the panelists are saying. Um, mm -hmm. You have people that are creative in this space. Um, I think having the perspective of creativity is the difference in, in where you are, aside from if you're having health conditions yourself, right? Meaning like if, if you're in a hospital room or you're suffering from healthcare conditions right now, then that's really not a time to get too creative. But I'm saying if, if someone is healthy, the health is good, what I found is the folks that are really having a tough time with it, their perspective has gotten narrow and the folks that are really starting to thrive in it have a really wide open perspective. And I was just thinking, you know, there's like, those families that started up a few companies on Long Island um, doing that birthday service. So when, so when it's a kid's birthday, they show up on the lawn, they put all these things up, they make money right there for doing that, then they go to the next client. So what's separating people that are suffering, who aren't on unemployment, and that are um, you know, not having those ideas? And I feel like it's the perspective. When it gets narrow, when our stress builds up, our perspective gets really narrow. And um, we don't see a way out. So um, I encourage people to do our stress stopper technique. I, I touched on it in the meditation that we did in the beginning. Anytime someone's stressed out at all, just touch the tension in, in your body. For me, it's mostly my chest. So I put my hand there. I start breathing deep and slow. And then once per breath, I silently say, I'm okay. And within about two minutes, you actually feel the tension just kind of dissipate and leave your body and your emotions start to equal out, right? So um, wh why that happens is that technique actually activates our body's relaxation response. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, that shuts down the fight or flight. So I encourage people to practice that whenever they're feeling that stress um, and anxiety building. Um, it's a really good way to you know, deal with the stress in the heat of the moment. Um, and also that's a, that's a technique that young kids learn um, people from all different walks of life. It's super simple. You know, just touch the tension, breathe deep and slow. Once per breath, say I'm okay. So I encourage, you know, anyone hearing this to, uh, to practice it, enjoy it. And it's a nice way to go to sleep at night too, if you're having trouble falling asleep. Sure. That's great. That's, great. That's what I think I was going to say. Yeah. I was going to say before you go to sleep, do that. So again, to take care of them. Um, the other thing, so what everyone has said, and I, the, um, when this first started, I was seeing patients and I had a few people who were like, this is going to be great. I don't have to go out. And I don't have, I'm like, yep, you've been preparing for this your whole life. Like this is, um, this is it. And I think that recognizing that, that there are people that this, this situation does fit. And I'm hoping what I've said before is I'm hoping that people will be more compassionate when they struggle because there are people right now who aren't struggling and they're not saying, what's your problem? They're, you know, hopefully asking how they can help. And I'm, I'm hoping that when this all switches back, that people will realize, you know what, I had a time where I wasn't feeling great and, and people couldn't see it and it, and it still, you know, impacted me. So I hope some compassion comes out of this. Um, and one of the other things that people have been talking about is this, you know, and I've even said it, it feels like it's not that I'm living like Groundhog Day every day this is, is over, it's the same day. Like I feel like my day started on the day of, of isolation has just been going on and on and on and on. <laughs> um, and so I think people being unable to have those markers and yeah. special events and things like that. So recognizing that and, um, and that's, that is a struggle and this repetition that we do over and over and over. Like we, you know, some people love it, right? And then there are other two, they put, different things in their life for a reason and they don't have that. And so they're struggling a little bit with that. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great, great point. Um, you know, the other thing we haven't talked much about is, um, you know, the family dynamic and kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I always like to throw out there that um, kids don't have words, they have behaviors. And um, in addition to that, adults are very much like children. And so, right. And so sometimes we don't have the words either. So our behaviors might be a little bit different when we're experiencing these stress. And so, you know, kids are very similar too. So I think it's, you know, to Brett's point, being creative, like even with dealing with stuff, right? Yeah. Like, what does that look like? So, you know, so we're talking a lot. So we're kind of t like dabbling into um, what it is like with 
um, when dealing with stress in the moment. And like breathing, I always feel like is sort of what we're told, like a textbook. Okay. Like, just remember to breathe, like just breathe. So you're, you know, and I love, and I love that it's okay. And slowing down. Does anybody else have anything they want to share from a best practice of like in the moment, how can we reduce stress? Uh, I can add a few sure, things, yeah. that, you know, that have worked for me or folks that I've worked with before. Um, breathing definitely is sort of the number one go-to for me. And that that's what I would share as well. Um, but there's, there's some sort of control in just letting it out. And I acknowledge that if you're not in the space to do that, you may not be able to do that. <laughs> but if you are, if you're in a safe space and you're surrounded by safe people or you're alone, let it out, whether it's that you're, you need to just cry and fall to the ground for a moment and just feel that and let it run through you and out of you, and whatever it is you need to do, just, just let it out. And on the heels of that, for me, very well is sweat it out. <laughs> so I am like a huge proponent of every morning I'm out with my kids. We take a half an hour walk. At first they hemmed and hawed, and now that's one of their favorite parts of the day. Throughout the day, we go outside. I make sure I get my workout in. And this, these are all things I suggest to clients of mine as well who maybe aren't as active or maybe aren't getting out and getting that fresh air. Um, you know, getting quiet with yourself, meditation, if that's your thing. Um, if you haven't tried it, just start just 10 minutes, even five minutes of sitting in complete silence and let's see what runs through that brain. And again, let it out. Um, let go of things you can't control, which is really hard to do. But when you're overwhelmed, there's a lot of that yeah. pain that comes from stuff that we can't do anything about. So focus on maybe the, the few things you can, you can control and take back again, that power, empower yourself to handle it, you know, let it out, sweat it out, breathe, breathe through it, you know, whatever might work for you. Um, maybe even just reach out to a friend or somebody that you feel comfortable with. If you are alone, a lot of folks are very isolated and on their own and having that trusted person to, you know, for me, and again, a lot of folks I'm working with are talking to me about really personal things. And I think just the act of saying it out loud and hearing what you're saying, instead of keeping it all bottled up in your brain and letting it, you know, ping pong can be really powerful and help you to gain some understanding of why you're feeling this way. I've also talked to people about journaling. Mm -hmm. um, some people have said, I've gone back to, I'm like, yeah, just writing it, you know, writing it down. So he said, let it out. Um, but, and it doesn't have to be a full on, like, you know, something someone else would read. But um, when people have them like do their breathing exercises and or meditation, they have these thoughts that bounce around their mm -hmm. head. And I'm like, just write that down. Don't even process it, just write it down. Cause it's, it's something in you that's coming out. And you can work on it later, but when we're quiet, when we're breathing, those things tend to bubble up. And so just writing it down, it gets it out of your brain and it doesn't keep bouncing around in your brain. Like, oh, I got to fix it. Nope. It's, I put it away and I'll deal with it when I have the energy, which is what I'm getting while I'm breathing. I'll move on. I think this conversation is really important just because I feel like it's talking about the, the mounting and accumulating anxiety that people yeah. feel as the days and the weeks and now the months go on. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really a time where we need that vent, like the teapot, you know, like yeah. Yeah. anxiety is building and it's getting hotter inside of us and it's, it's, it's just building up. So one thing that I feel is really important, which kind of dovetails into what everybody's saying, is getting in touch with the core emotion mm. that's bothering you, right? So if we have a couple of core emotions like anger, sadness, frustration, jealousy, you know, you could throw anxiety in there because it's so big right now, um, just being able to say, like I'll go out on my back deck or I'll walk in the backyard when I feel things just building up and I vent it like every day. So it's literally just like pressing the teapot top and it just vents out. So I just say, you know, I'm really feeling a lot of whatever it is, anger right now. And I'll say, it sucks that X, Y, and Z mm -hmm. is happening. <laughs> and then right there, I just gave my feelings a voice and then they just start coming out. So I just let um, myself verbalize a stream of consciousness that's tapped into that core emotion that's bothering me, that's upsetting me. And um, I find that that helps keep me in more general emotional balance mm -hmm. and to deal with things in a more clear way is giving myself that 
a very systematic routine time to just go in the backyard and just kind of tap the, um, the teapot, let it vent in that simple way. And I don't judge anything. You'd be surprised the crazy things that come out of your mouth. I'll just right. be the crazy thoughts and ideas and emotions that come out of my mouth when I let myself vent. And it's really an interesting, awesome process because you feel the tension disengage as you're doing it. Once you give those core emotions um, a voice, that it just starts to unwind and unlock and you actually feel the tension release. And I just love what I'm hearing from the other panelists. If you feel tears coming up, I know it's tough for some people, but you got to let yourself cry. It's like an emotional car wash that cleans you out on the inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Emotional car wash. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I called it. I called it a release, but I like car wash way better. <laughs> way better. You know, I think it's. Oh, good. Oh no, I, I was just gonna share. You, you're making me think in this whole idea of letting it out and and really touching what that emotion is. Just a very funny side note here, which you never know. It could work for some people. Um, I had taken a walk on some trails. I like to run trails, so I'm on this trail, and there's a big tunnel you have to go through, mm -hmm. and it's very dark, but you can see at the other side there's light. So I get in this tunnel, I'm all worked up from the day. And I literally halfway through, I just stopped and I screamed as loud as I could. And by the time I got out, I was like, woo, <laughs> I feel so good. <laughs> so now it's called the screaming tunnel. So if, you know, if, if that can help somebody. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, Fred, or and to everyone in terms of the, um, the, the feeling of initially, this feels weird, this feels uncomfortable. Like getting comfortable with that is like one of the best things on the planet because it's short term. And one of the things about anxiety is we're trying to avoid things that are gonna harm us in the long run. But in reality, what it's doing, it's harming us in the short term as well. And so what the things that we're talking about are saying, get comfortable with that, get comfortable yeah. with crying, comfortable with screaming, comfortable with that, because in the long run, it's gonna help you. Um, but a, a lot of times we avoid that and that's where the anxiety builds up is because we're so busy avoiding those things. So I think it's great, like, yeah. We'll have a lot of screaming, but we'll all be like, no. Yeah. It's, it's not to get freaked out by your feelings, you know? No, be okay with it. Like, this is... No. Accept them. <laughs> so, but to that point, that kind of is a good segue, right? So sometimes people don't want to feel things, right? Yes. Yeah. Or they've been through things that are, yeah. um, you know, we, we refer to like little T's and big T's, like little traumas, big traumas, like before pandemic. So pandemic mm. is like its own thing, right? And that could probably be classified in a certain way. Um, but you know, there's people that are really struggling with past experiences that they now have more time to sit with, that they can't necessarily avoid, or they're in situations at home that are not ideal or optimal. So I guess, like, are there any, like, what, what would be your recommendation for somebody that might be in a bad situation at home or can't get out of that like anxious spiral of you know negative social media or whatever it is that's you know kind of deteriorating who they are emotionally. Any suggestions? I know that I've had some employees just ask the question like, I don't know where I go from here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even like on the clinical side, kind of like how Heather had alluded to before. Like I've had nurses come to me who say like, I have a very serious health condition. I don't know that I can provide care for the next six months to a year to two years. We don't know when, you know, a vaccine will be here. So do I need to take a career pivot? And uh, maybe that could be the case, but I think that slowing down and ultimately thinking through, um, sorry, I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know where that went. Sorry guys. <laughs> No, it's fine. Pulling down it's and being fine. mindful, trying to find the, the positive and the negative, I think is where I was going with this. And so actually my first job that Mark, I consider my first real job was door-to-door -door sales. There's a lot of onslaught of rejection and negativity there. And so part of my sales training was that there are three positives to every negative. So trying to find what good there is in a bad situation. So kind of like what Brett was alluding to, unfortunately, you know, this is happening, but so even for the case of Connect RN, like, unfortunately we have clinicians that are providing care to patients. And as a result, they themselves are contracting COVID-19. 
but fortunately they're pro they're providing life saving care to so many patients across the country fortunately this is an industry that is going to continue to be stable in the long term and fortunately uh we do still have a job to support our families now that might not be the case for some people but you can flip that unfortunately fortunately yeah. to, to work in so many situations i think yeah you need to like work hard though right to build that that foundation that ability to be able to shift your mindset like that that's resilience that's grit that is you know i mean i'm a combat vet and i just admire those on the front lines today because it's not an easy place to be or to work with them it's and not and you, even if you're not in healthcare you feel you feel it anyway because it's everywhere like we're hearing it we're seeing it right i joke that like the um the newsstands at whole foods like like if you're not a stressed out person you feel <laughs> like you should be stressed out because every headline is anxiety stress anxiety stress and it's like oh i think i'm supposed to be those things so um i mean i totally feel yeah heather it's like the, the old, it just keeps popping up over and over for me is this idea of boundaries yeah, and sure. I know that that too can be very difficult because we get into habits and routines and we go into that downward spiral. But if you can catch yourself and acknowledge, oh my God, I am going down and I'm going down hard. Like I got to pull myself up here. Start with boundaries. Think, you know, am I watching the news 24 seven? Turn it off. Am I on social media looking at the, the negative 24 seven? turn it off, focus on something that's, you know, more positive. Is there a, a um, hobby, I was gonna say habit, is there a hobby that used to bring me joy that I haven't tapped into during this time because I'm in that spiral and my tunnel vision is on? Maybe it's that I used to love playing guitar and I haven't picked it up in a month or two months. Tap into that. So this idea of just setting some boundaries to protect your own space and your own emotions um and your mental health really at the end of the day yeah yeah it's true it's true and you know it sort of it goes back and like we talked a little bit about guilt earlier and i know when we were preparing for this panel we talked about like feeling guilty for self-care feeling guilty for taking time for ourselves so i mean you know i guess how can we help help people understand that you know, um, caring for yourself is really the best thing you can do for yourself or other people. I think it's most important for us, um, especially for parents that do have kids in the house, to recognize that um, what we do at this time is gonna be remembered for a long time. Mm. From our family, uh, from our kids, our neighbors, how we handled this. So I think it's really important to have our priorities straight. When this first happened, my priorities for a family were um, mental, emotional, and physical well-being. And then right under that, it was like all of our responsibilities, like the homeschooling, me and my wife figuring out ways that we can make money in this climate, um, things like that. But you know what that priority and a totem pole looked like with the mental, emotional, and physical well-being, a lot of that was going for walks, like Heather said, you know, getting out in nature and our kids, we had three teenagers, so they did not want to get up when we wanted to get up. And this is ridiculous what I did, but it was like 10 o'clock. I opened up all the windows. It was when it was still cold. And they were like, what are you doing? I'm like, don't be alarmed, but there's a little gas leak. <laughs> I'm not recommending <laughs> Desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> oh, man. So we were all out of the house in like three minutes. And we went for an awesome hike. Came back like two hours later. They're like, "Is everything okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, they came and fixed it when we were gone." <laughs> we were like two That's days. Amazing. Later, and everyone was laughing the head off. But it got us into a little bit of a routine. Yeah. And in the beginning to the middle of this whole thing, so far, we were doing hikes, um, like two hour, maybe sometimes even three hour hikes with the kids, and that was our mental, physical, and emotional well being. And if you don't have access to that, I would definitely have like, depending on the age of your kids, charades, this, have like regular things that the family could play, even dancing and listening to music, singing to Absolutely. music, making up songs, playing instruments, 
playing the drums on the table, figuring out ways to liven up the environment in a way that's freeing, that frees the mind um, and that's fun. And the other thing is, which is even more important that I feel than what I just said is this, identify the weak links in your life. There's people in your life that are going through a tough time right now. If you're not in contact with them, um, and the only reason why I'm saying this is there was, I know two people in the last 48 hours that had passed away, mm -hmm. right? Um, one was in hospice and the other was from suicide, right? And anxiety as it builds, and let's face it, we were not taught how to handle stress or anxiety or our emotions in school. It's, it's like a mystery for some reason in this country how to do it, you know? So regardless of that, the majority of the population has this growing anxiety. What happens then? It starts to go into depression and hopelessness. Then what happens then? People want a way out. So identify the people in your life, please, that you feel are the weaker links and that they're just struggling with what's going on right now and connect with them. Just hold space. Just calling them. Yeah. And just saying, you know, letting them vent, right? Letting them cry, holding space, and just saying, I care about you. I love you. You know, you don't got to figure anything out. Just listening and saying, I care about you. I love you. Mm -hmm. No matter what, we're going to get through this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm in it with you. So letting them feel that connection. And without judgment, just letting them say whatever they need to say. But, um, you know, that was a huge, huge lesson for me. Um, and throughout this experience, I've been keeping tabs on people and just trying to hold space. And and um, you'll find that just your presence on the call mm -hmm. will lift up their emotional affect from the beginning to the middle to the end of the call. And usually by the time you get off the call, their energy is totally different. And you don't have to go down to their level. You're just holding space. So you're grounding in your own energy and your own personality and your own spirit. And you're just being present for them. To sift through and you know how you, uh, Heather, when you were talking about getting quiet and noticing all the crazy thoughts, it's you holding that quiet space for them and allowing them to verbalize their thoughts that might be driving them down and bringing them down. So I encourage everybody to do that, not to let it depress you, just to hold space, you know, for them, not to try and solve any of their problems, just to hold space and connect with them so they know that you're there for them. Um, that's just super, super, super important. I feel, um, you know, right now, because in this climate with the state of the world, humanity, we only have each other, you know, all we have is each other. Right. So, um, I think that's just an important way to stay connected with those. I like that. I like that. And you're, you're saying it's okay. It's okay to be you in this moment and you're there. And, um, uh, a lot of times people don't realize that when you do something kind for other people, it actually helps yourself personally too. Right. So you boost your own really great, uh, you know, all your, the great hormones for you to make you feel happier in life. So that's okay too. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's a really great point. And something that you said earlier, um, Brett, I don't want to forget about either is, you know, what, how we're reacting today or how we're behaving today is being, is going to be remembered, right? Um, for a very long time. Okay. And so that's where I think, um, you know, employers too, right? So if we think about how employers are treating their employees right now is also a really great reflection of how they're going to treat you <laughs> for the rest of your tenure there. Right. So, you know, I guess that being said, Sammy, are you, are there any benefits that are, um, that employers are hoping to offer to their teams in order to create connection and culture going forward to whatever the new norm will look like? I, guess, I don't even know what to call it anymore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, two things I'll address on this is the culture component. Um, employers are really asking or trying to ensure, is there even a workplace culture for remote employees? A recent survey that we um, ran kind of indicated that employees are intending to remain remote after all of this. You know, it, it hasn't maybe has been as bad. They want to save on the commute, whatever their reasons might be. So we're seeing a really large uptick in clients requesting these kind of workforce engagement services, whether it be like company wide challenges where you compete against your, your colleagues, um, mm -hmm. stress management webinars, uh, virtual mixology classes have been a big one. Oh. Anything involving booze is a huge hit. <laughs> and even, you know, like 
live sets with, with stand-up comedians has also been really big. So an opportunity to laugh. And they're also opening up these services for employees' families to participate in or their dependents, mm -hmm. which kind of shows how they're really trying to foster more of that um, work-life integration for the remote workforce. So um, whether it be through, you know, kind of the education side or the, the creation of these digital teams or challenges or social interaction done virtually, um, employers are really forced to consider, is that company culture truly felt and supported for the uh, remote workforce? So that's kind of one component. The, the second side is, you know, working on your couch was cute for the first three weeks. Um, now, how does your neck feel? Like, how does your body feel? What's your ergonomic setup at home? Um, what's the environment that you live in? And how could employers impact that? Traditionally, this was not really any of uh, their responsibility, but now it's very much quickly become top of mind. So we're seeing uh, employers investing in remote employees, whether it be uh, set up from a hardware, software, ergonomic uh, perspective. Right. And as well, you know, kind of, Gone are those water cooler conversations. Gone are those kind of like high fives or random lunches that you would have with your colleagues. So they're looking for technology platforms or digital platforms that facilitate those, um, that kind of sense of community inside and outside of the physical workspace. Yeah. So cool. It, like when times like these happen, it's really interesting to see what sort of innovation disruption can bring. And it, the, like you said, Brett, earlier, like the, the creativity of what people can come up with is just mind blowing. That's awesome. I'm so glad that companies are looking to create more comfortable lives for people that have sort of been displaced, right? Um, I also know, and I don't know if Allison, you can speak to this, but um, a lot of companies are adding or um, upgrading EAP benefits and other benefits for mental health because Brett, to your point, I mean, this this pandemic is creating, you know, a lot of isolation for people and could be, you know, allowing people to want to harm themselves or others, right? And so we want to give resources. Allison, have you noticed anything like that? Um, yes, I have. I will clarify. I'm not the world's best benefit specialist. So I, I will. Well, no, I just mean from like a people support um, but perspective. I, as far as from a support perspective, definitely. I mean, you've seen a ton of employers look into providing an additional day of PTO to sure. be mindful of mental health awareness month, something that we are adopting at Connect RN we have dubbed as disconnect time. So rather than giving a single day off, we're taking an hour company wide every single week now where we fully disconnect. No one can have a meeting. You can't call someone. You can't Slack someone. You can't text someone. Okay. So that way you can go, you know, be with your family, play a video game, do some exercise, whatever you want to do to like, have that reset moment. And we made sure that it wasn't during a lunch hour because that just feels icky, right? Like you should already be taking that as a break time as it is, even though I know I'm guilty of working through lunch pretty consistently these days, um, but things like that. And I mean, also kind of, it's, it's a delicate balance, right? Where kind of what um, Sammy was just saying here, you want to be able to provide some of those water cooler conversations that aren't happening right now. So lots of happy hours, lunch and learns, we get together and we'll actually have smaller groups meet with an executive and they can Grubhub or DoorDash, whatever food they want to eat in the social setting, but get to know that executive to get some of that togetherness. Simultaneously, I hear from a lot of people that they're suffering from Zoom fatigue. So yeah. we didn't necessarily want to just bring in a mental health expert to do a webinar one time because a one time thing isn't necessarily going to systematically, you know, meet that need. So we mm -hmm. thought that by having that weekly disconnect time, that would be a little bit more helpful ongoing and then actively continuing to recommend to our employees that they take a day off. It is okay. You should take a day off and please do not work on holidays like Memorial Day, for example, coming up really quick here, unless of course you're, you're needed at the hospital or you know the long-term care facility naturally with our clinicians, um, but still making sure that they themselves are taking them time because 
we're, and I'll give this credit to Ashira Gobrin, who's the chief people officer over at Wave HQ. We're in this time right now where we have an oxygen mask moment. So when you're on a flight, you need to help put on the oxygen mask for yourself first and then your family members. And so as we think through this, and I'm going to share a quote here, I'm afraid I don't know where this comes from, but when you adopt other people's pain too often, you leave no room to listen to your own. You leave no room to hear your own pain without distraction. You leave no room to understand your own pain without minimizing your feelings. So leave room for you frequently. And I know that was something that really resonated with a lot of the nurses that I talk to on a regular basis, but that can be applied to parents. That can be applied to, you know, millennials who might have aging parents. It's anybody who has somebody in their lives that they're caring for. So I think it can only start by paying attention to what you have, but uh, I think that employers are being more mindful of that. Um, I mean, quick raise of hands. How many of you have had to cancel a vacation at some point in the past couple months or upcoming? <laughs> Right. <laughs> like, yeah. So by making sure that we're still encouraging people to take that PTO pay time off to not uh, abbreviate things and have that mental break is so, so, so crucial. And thankfully seeing that from a lot of employers that I've uh, read about. I think just on the heels of that, speaking of healthcare, um, there was just the other day, the timing of things is just so crazy, but just the other day I was telling Crystal, I connected with Catherine Rose, who's the founder of an organization and a platform called Wise Her. And it's an amazing platform for a variety of reasons in terms of resources. And while we are all also wonderful resources and there are so many out there, um, one thing that they have kicked off in this pandemic is a um, free offering for wellness coaching for folks that are on the front lines. And they have over 400, I want to say almost 500 coaches on this platform at this point available for free to, to these frontline healthcare workers. Um, and I just feel like it, it, again, popping up for me as you were talking, Allison, as another resource for somebody listening who maybe is in healthcare or isn't and knows someone that is just to, to spread the word on that. Um, and the other thing that I kept thinking when you were talking too is, you know, the quote you were saying and, and coming back to some of what Brett was saying earlier, I always think of that analogy of like the, the glass of water. And so if that's your body, your vessel, and your glass is way low because you're not providing yourself the self-care, you're not acknowledging the feelings, you're not giving yourself that love you deserve, there is no opportunity for it to overflow and impact your family, your friends, your coworkers. So it, it really, I just have to say it again, that self-care and making sure you prioritize and give yourself the oxygen mask moment and put it on, <laughs> breathe it in, so you can sort of overflow and, and spread positivity to people around you and help. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like, you know, and it's, it's hard to like shift your mindset sometimes, but when you actually do end up by taking that moment even to breathe or scream or whatever, and you actually feel the difference afterwards, that's where the magic is, right? So it's like actually doing it, actually taking that day off and feeling empowered by controlling your schedule. And there's so many things, but you just have to take that first step, right? Like that little itty bitty baby step. Um, so, you know, I mean, obviously you guys have all provided some really great um, resources, ideas, um, and help for our viewers, but at some point, like, we're going to have to reopen or there's going to be some version of reopening or whatever. I like already said, I don't know what to even call it. Um, so I guess there's a few things. So there's probably some people that have developed some really great self-care habits and like, how do they keep them? Um, you know, we've talked about like trying to maintain connections in a way, maybe it's been digitally through social media. Like how do we shift back from that and maybe face-to-face -face interactions again, like what are the, you know, what, how do, how are we gonna make the new norm right? Any ideas? Well, I've been talking with people a lot about just recognizing that we are gonna go through a transition. Like this was a hard transition going into this situation, but we're gonna all make this gradual transition back to um, our lives and to just be mindful of that moment. 
so I've said to them, you know, think about the things that you, as we were talking about earlier about priorities, right? So we're talking about our priorities in this moment, but also, you know, if connection is important to you now, making sure that it stays a priority, how are you going to do that? And thinking about that, you know, those types of things. So as you transition um, to whatever is next, keeping at the core, what is important to you? And that's what I've heard a lot from people as they've gone through this. Like, I really didn't remember how much I enjoyed guitar. I didn't remember how much I enjoyed talking to this person and that person. And I'm like, okay, let's hold on to that. Let's not, you know, things are going to get busy in about a couple of weeks, but I need you to remember that you still like reaching out to so-and-so and what that means to you. So really hold on to, as we transition back, what your priorities are now, because things bubble to the top. I think that's what happened. Um, and so keeping that in mind, also keeping in mind um, that uh, being kind to yourself, again, it was fast to get in here, slowly. You know, it's going to be slow and to take it slow so that you don't rush. Um, I hear from, I work with uh, a lot of people, but including healthcare providers and people saying, you know, I should feel this way and I should feel that way. And as we talked about early on, the way you feel is the way you feel, it's okay. Like, if you don't feel like going back right now, we'll talk about what that means. But it's not, you have, um, what I've been saying to people is keep in mind, you're not trapped. You have opportunities, mm -hmm. right? And so when, when we act in an attract mind, we get anxious and nervous. When we have opportunities, we take our time. We don't feel so rushed. So it's the mindset that you have. There, there will be things that people need to know in the moment, but those might not be your priorities. And so you say, I have the opportunity and take control that way as well. Mm -hmm. I think a really um, important thing to add right to that is having your priorities when things start to open up and having healthy boundaries that you're okay with inside of you. You're crystal clear with them. And, you know, this way, if you're walking down your block and your neighbor is running over you to give you a hug, you, mm -hmm. if you're not comfortable with that, just be ready to put your hand out and say, hey, I'm still distancing. I'm still doing four feet or whatever. Whatever your healthy boundary is, be clear with it. So you could just deliver it when, you know, you want to, um, you know, are you going to be going to a ball game in a, in a packed crowd? Most people, I don't know, probably not. Some people are probably, you know, dying to get back to a ball game. Um, so just be really clear with what you're comfortable with and we're in uncharted territory. So I always felt this thing wasn't going to end like that. I felt it was going to be like waves, you know, like a camel hump, you know, as far as like cases and things like that and the, and the threat of it. So we just, you know, we're going to have to ride the waves, but know your flow, know inside what is your priority and what are your healthy boundaries so that at least you're clear with yourself, you know, because you'll have other people that are coming towards you that don't care about that. You know, do I want to wear a mask until this is all done? Like you have to, these are all questions that you would decide for yourself. Um, there's people that aren't wearing masks now and don't care. And, you know what I mean? So you just want to decide for yourself and, and how to, when they're approaching you in a healthy way to deliver your healthy boundary um, mm -hmm. that you're okay with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a client ask me recently, just this past week, um, how, how am I supposed to undo everything that has been done? And it's just such an open-ended question and it's coming up again because of this conversation. Uh, one thing that I would really love to remind folks is there is the idea of getting back to things and however that might look right. But I think there's also this idea of uh, the boundaries and the priorities. And really for me, it is, do we have to, do you have to get back to everything? Think about what has really worked well for you in this time. Um, again, focusing on where have I felt most comfortable? Is it that we haven't had to go to a birthday party three times in a weekend for my child's friends. Is it that we didn't have 10 plans in seven days that we were rushing back and forth to? Is it that, wow, I never realized I was spending X number of hours carpooling my children, myself to activities left and right. And, you know, just again, being mindful of how it feels to have slowed down even though it was forced on us. And as we begin to transition back and ride that wave and, and know your flow, hold on to what really is working for you. I think it could be very easy to just rush back into that hurried life and, and just kind of forget. I love that. I know I am. Um... 
I, I love that we can give ourselves permission to say that this sucks right now, <laughs> um, but also understand that there has been some personal growth and we yeah. have been able to sort of see where we are at and where we want to be. And, you know, not, not knowing what the new norm looks like will be, uh, you know, will allow us to continue this, this self-development in just a different way. Right. So it, it'll, it definitely will be interesting for sure. And we're creating it. Like that's the, yeah. you know, it's like we're, we're creating good? it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can so, only control ourselves, right? I and mean, we barely really can do that. That we can do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's right. I'm like, you can only that. control yourself and you can barely do with that. So, you know, good luck. <laughs> so true. All right, panelists, we're about to wrap up. So is there anything else that you'd like to add before we sign off today? I wanted to uh, add a final comment. Just, um, very honored to be with this panel. Thank you so much for putting it together. It was an amazing experience. Um, I love the um, airplane mask moment. Uh, mm -hmm. The top priority is taking care of yourself yeah. and you can see things clearly. I would have your priorities and your healthy boundaries as we move out of this very clear within yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, it is, this could be seen as a very important time in history for like a global reset for humanity to take a look at it and say, what's important for me? And if we could do that as individuals, you know, in our homes, right, or our apartments, say, what's really important to me? Like, I love what Heather said, just from hearing you talk in that one moment, how busy are all of our lives? It's ridiculous, you know? And we're doing, not, not that we're all doing meaningless things, but it is a lot of shuffling and hustle and bustle that, as we can see, it doesn't need to be that way. So if we could anchor in some of this self-care you know, really start to nurture the inner peace, discover what, you know, to get take it even a step further, discover what's really important to us and maybe get in touch with our purpose. Can you imagine what humanity would look like in 10 years from now if even 30% of the population got in touch with their purpose mm -hmm. for coming to the planet and started spending time nurturing that? Um, I know the last month and a half I've been working on developing a course a six week course, which will be out in June, which is really meant to throw a big monkey wrench into stress and anxiety. So, you know, I'm really excited about that, but it was an honor to be here and i um, really thankful to each one of you. Yeah, I learned a lot. I would, I would say the same, very honored to be part of this. It's been so, so great to just hear and get my own little nuggets, um, which makes me really hopeful that everybody out there that's listening in will also get what they need from this. Um, and I just would like to, I think, reinforce, um, and again, just kind of coming up for me, reaching out, like Brett said, to those people who maybe you're feeling uncomfortable because you know they're really not in a good place, but that little lifeline you throw them with a phone call, maybe it's a text that feels better to you, in some way connecting with those folks and just letting them know that you're there to hold space for them because those are the, those are the individuals that need that now more than ever. Um, and if you are listening and you're one of those folks, reach out, ask for the help that you need because it's there um, from us, from folks very close to you who certainly want to give that to you. So. I was going to say, reach out to everybody. I think uh, it's tricky right now when you t talked about, you know, the people that may be suffering, it's hard to know who those people yeah. are. And so just when you said reach out, I'm like, yes, reach out. It's so acceptable now. Like, you know, I remember I would call people and they would look at their phone for like 10 minutes. Like, why are you calling me? You know, and now people get yeah. the phone one ring. I'm like, this is amazing. You know, text people that you haven't talked to in, in, in years, maybe. Um, because now it's a, a time it's, a, it's, it's acceptable. And so I just encourage people. I, I was saying um, earlier, like I'm, I'm not a huge uh, social media person, but I think it's awesome for connection. And so I just want to encourage people that even through your social media platforms where you have this whole list of people that love your pictures, like ask maybe how they're doing every, you know, six or seven likes, you know, or something like that. I don't know if people still do that, but um, whatever people use. Um, so just en encouraging connection. I and mean, that's what this is. And I'm so thankful that we were able to connect. And I, and I hope that um, others will see this as an example of like people from different backgrounds and different um, aspects and perspectives coming together to, to, to really join together to lift other people up. So this has been very encouraging. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, Thank the you. only thing I'll add there is 
just, you know, from the employer perspective, uh, kind of what we got at a little bit before is that just because May is Mental Health Awareness Month doesn't mean that this should be the only time that these conversations are happening. So I am extremely grateful to Crystal and the team at Smart Bear for putting this together and introducing me to these amazing panelists. I know that I've already shared some of uh, like Brett's technique. For example, I shared that literally this morning because uh, he told us on our prep call. Uh, but just continuing the conversation, like hosting one webinar or listening to, you know, one podcast will only go so far, but continuing to have this conversation and normalize, uh, to destigmatize that these feelings are anything but normal, uh, just needs to continue to happen, both from the employer perspective and from individuals. So, yeah, thank you. 100% agree. Sammy, do you have anything else you want to add? No, there's a responsibility that employers have. So take it seriously. Um, this is a, a wonderful opportunity to set the tone for what the future of your company can look like. So that's awesome. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful. Thank you for putting this together, Crystal. And it was yeah. awesome being on this with the uh, other panelists. Yeah. Well, I am beyond honored and grateful to bring you all together today. So thank you so very much for being here. Um, viewers, I will be sharing, we will be sharing the contact information for all of our panelists today. So you'll be able to get in touch. So everybody wants you to get in touch. So you'll have definitely, you know, five, six people to get in touch with after today's call. And I hope that everybody learned something, whether you participate in our panel or in our audience. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.